Hello friends, this is Manoj Goel, co-founder of the Wall Street School. And in this video, we will discuss about different different methods of valuation of a company. So let's understand. Valuation methods. Friends, broadly, we can classify these valuation methods into three categories. Relative valuation, intrinsic valuation, which is also known as DCF valuation and cost approach. Now let's understand what's the basic difference between these three methods of valuation, how they are different from each other. Relative valuation. Friends, relative valuation is comparison based valuation. Under this method of valuation, we try to find fair value of the target business or company based on how other similar type of companies are priced in the market. Okay, so here basis of valuation is market. How the market is pricing same type of companies right in the market. Okay, whereas under DCF method of valuation, the valuation is based on projected cash flows. So we find valuation on the basis of future cash flows of the business discounted to the present value. Friends, the basic difference between these two methods. Under relative valuation, the market views decide my valuation. What the market think about valuation of the same type of companies. Whereas under DCF valuation, analyst view plays dominant role in the valuation. What analysts think about future of the company? Because your projection is based on your own assumptions. Okay, so this is what basic difference between relative valuation and DCF valuation. Now, the third approach, cost approach. Friends, under cost approach, we find valuation of the business based on net realizable value of its assets, less diabetes. Okay, so what we can realize by selling the assets of the business, net of its liabilities, that will decide the valuation of the business. Here guys, we are not giving any valuation to the business of the company. Here, valuation is based on assets, less liabilities. Okay, so normally we apply this method of valuation when the companies are at the verge of bankruptcy, when there is no business, no operation in existence. Okay, so these are the three broader methods of valuation, whereas <clears throat> first two methods are applicable for the going concern and normally we apply this third method for the bankrupt companies where we don't have any business to value. Now friends, let's understand relative valuation technique in detail. Okay. Relative valuation. Friends, we can understand this technique of valuation with the help of an real estate example. Okay. So let's see how we do valuation of a real estate. Okay. So let's assume you have a real estate property which you want to sell. So normally you go to the agent and you inquire about the fair price of the property, the price at which you can sell the property, how the agent will find the price of the property. Let's understand. Friends, the agent will apply relative technique to find the price of this property. How? First, agent will find same type of properties which were previously bought and sold in the same locality. Okay. So at what price? same type of properties were sold in the market in the past and let's assume agent could get these four properties which were sold in the market previously property a b c and d and in the next column we have total area of these properties okay so property a is of 2000 square feet property b is of 2200 square feet property C is of 2800 square feet and property D is of 3000 square feet. Then in the next column, agent put the prices of this property, the price at which these properties were transacted. Okay. So property A was sold for $3,20,000. Property B was sold for $3,69,600. Property C was sold for $4,53,600 and property D was sold for 4,98,000. So we can see we have four properties and we have different prices of all four properties. Now, can we compare these prices of the property? The answer is no. The reason is all these four properties are of different size. And because of the difference in the size, these absolute prices are not comparable. Now, how do we standardize these prices? How do we make these prices comparable? 
let's understand so friends what agent will do to standardize this price the agent will convert these absolute prices into price per square feet he or she will divide the total price of the property with the area of the property to get at what price these properties were sold in terms of price per square feet now we can see in the last column agent has calculated price per square feet for all four properties property a was sold for 160 dollar property b was sold for 168 dollar property c was sold for 162 dollar per square feet and property d was sold for 166 dollar per square feet guys these prices are comparable reason being these prices belongs to the standardized unit per square feet now we have to find market consensus because we can see slight variation in this price per square foot so we cannot decide any of the price as a market consensus so we have to decide market consensus based on median so we can see guys the median price of the properties which were sold in the past is 164 dollar okay so this is the price at which properties were sold in the market that's a market consensus now on the basis of this 164 dollar per square feet price we can find or we can estimate fair value of our target property let's see friends let's assume the area of our target property is 2500 square feet this is the total area of our property now on the basis of the past you know uh, properties prices on the basis of the assessment we did we could see that the previously properties were sold at an average price of 164 dollar per square feet now the estimated value of our target property is 2500 which is the total area of our property multiplied by 164 dollar per square feet price and the valuation is coming 4 lakh 10 thousand dollar this price or this value of the property is based on comparison this price is decided by the market which is on the basis of how previously the same type of properties were sold in the market so it's a comparison based valuation guys okay now let's understand how we can apply same technique to value companies let's see friends let's assume we have an it company xyz limited okay and we want to find fair value of this property this company based on how other companies like xyz limited are priced in the market so we want to apply relative valuation technique to value this company xyz let's understand friends as we discussed in the case of properties we first have to identify same type of companies which are already priced in the market which are already listed in the market and we could see we have four companies which are already listed in the market Infosys, TCS, Wipro and Tech Mahindra. All four companies are IT companies. Now we have to find their price. At what price these companies are trading in the market. So we can see in the next column we have price as on 25th of August 23. Infosys is trading at 1420 rupees per share. TCS is trading at 3,381 rupees per share. Wipro is priced at 410 and Tech Mahindra is priced at 1189. Okay. Now, guys, these are the absolute prices. They are not comparable in absolute terms. Reason being, against these prices, we have different, different earnings. Okay. So, we can see in the next column, we have latest 12 months earnings per share. So, Infosys is giving me per share earnings of 59.5 rupees, whereas TCS is giving me earnings of 119.5 rupees. Wipro is giving me earnings 22.3 uh, 22 rupees per share, and Tech Mahindra is giving me earnings of 45 rupees per share. So, as we can see, earnings per shares of all four companies are different, okay, and that's why their absolute prices are not comparable. So we first have to convert these absolute prices into standardized measure of value. So let's see how we do that. So friends, what we did, we standardized this price 
this price per share by dividing this with the earnings per share and we got price to earning multiple okay against one rupees of earnings okay against one rupees of eps what price market is charging and we can see infosys is trading at 23.9 times of its earnings it means the market is charging or market is giving 23.9 rupees of the valuation against 1 rupees of earnings of infosys and likewise we have multiple for tcs wipro and tech mahindra so we got multiples of all four compare all four companies which are comparable to each other okay and which are operating in the it space and we can see these companies are priced at different different multiples now we cannot pick any of these multiples to value my target company xyz limited we have to find market consensus and the market consensus is median i can see the median price of all four companies on the basis of all four companies the median is 25.2 times this is the median p multiple okay this is the market consensus about the it companies so this is how it companies are priced by the market market is giving valuation of 25.2 times to the earnings of it companies now friends let's do valuation of our target company xyz limited friends let's assume my it company xyz limited has total earnings 90000 million rupees last year earnings so in the last 12 months my company earned 90000 million rupees profit now what would be the valuation as per the past data as per the comparable company's data i can see the market is giving valuation of 25.2 times of its earnings now the valuation of this xyz limited would be what 25.2 times of its total earnings 90000 rupees is the total earnings and the market multiple industry consensus multiple is 25.2 times this is the p multiple okay now the estimated value based on the comparison based on the market is coming out 2268 billion rupees so friends we can see how we found valuation of xyz limited using relative approach in the next video we will discuss discounted cash flow approach in detail so stay tuned stay connected for more details you can call on this number or check out the link in the description